Hi, welcome to C-Sharp.net Skill Track. This is the final leg of your LC101 curriculum, and it's intended to give you practical, hands-on, real-world skills in professional-grade tools and technologies uh, to prepare you for a job as a C-Sharp or .NET developer. And in this um, overview, we're going to give you a high-level picture of how the Skill Track is organized and what you'll be learning. So what will you learn in the C-Sharp.net skill track? The first thing that we'll dive into is procedural C-Sharp syntax. So procedural syntax um, just means in opposition to, say, object-oriented syntax. So we'll be relearning a lot of the similar concepts that we've learned in Python earlier in the course in C-Sharp and mostly just adjusting uh, our brains to adapt to this new syntax. And there'll be a few new concepts we'll learn along the way, but there'll be a lot of overlap with previous material. We'll then go into object-oriented concepts. We briefly touched on objects and classes in unit one, and we're gonna take a much deeper dive in this skill track. Object-oriented programming is really the basis of working in a language like C-sharp, and learning how to use the object-oriented tools within the language properly is going to be critical for your success and for your ability to really build uh, you know, scalable, testable, um, you know, really high-performing applications in C-sharp and ASP.NET. So we're going to spend plenty of time working with object-oriented concepts. We'll also be learning a lot about the Visual Studio IDE. So you might think of, um, you know, the editor that you're coding in as just, uh, just something that is part of the furniture of the way you work, but integrated development environments, and in particular Visual Studio, which uh, we'll use to develop C-sharp and .NET applications, are really the programmer's uh, toolkit and using them well and using them effectively is critical for every professional developer. And then we'll also go into the ASP.NET MVC framework. .NET is a large framework that has uh, lots of different components and ASP.NET MVC is one of those components. This will allow us to build MVC style applications. Re re uh, recall that we encountered the concept of MVC applications in unit two. We used um, we used a Python-based framework to build MVC applications there. And MVC here means the same thing. Now ASP.NET MVC is going to be structured uh, very differently from, from um, what we looked at in the Python world, but the conceptual, high-level conceptual pieces of model, view, and controller, and how those are organized in our code are going to translate very nicely. In particular, we're going to look at how we can build controllers to handle requests, we're going to build views to present your application to a user. And then we're going to build persistent models to represent the business logic of our applications and to store data in a database. Here's how we're going to approach learning all these concepts. Uh, this last um, portion of the LC101 curriculum is really kind of getting you close to um, the, the way in which professional programmers work. And so there's going to be some differences in the, in the curriculum here and the differences in the way we present topics and materials from what you've seen previously. So in terms of the resources we're going to use, there's three major resources or types of resources we're going to use. The first is a collection of lessons called C Sharp for Python programmers. Let's go have a look at this really quickly. Um, I'm going to go to the C Sharp site. Um, and if you forget where the URL is, you can always go to education.launchcode.org and look for the back end C Sharp curriculum. Of course, uh, we'll always link to the appropriate pages from within Canvas or learn.launchcode.org as well. So up here, I can go to the menu and just go directly to this c -sharp for Python programmers uh, curriculum. This is um, an adapted open source curriculum that um, explains object-oriented concepts in c -sharp in a way that relates those to things you've already learned before in Java. So there's a collection of lessons here, and they're uh, text-based. And so we'll go over through a lot of these, especially as we get started with the c -sharp language. Another tool that we'll use a lot for lessons is a course on Microsoft Virtual Academy. And so this is a course, uh, it's video-based, and it's on the Microsoft Virtual Academy site. It's called C-Sharp Fundamentals for Absolute Beginners. This is a great set of lessons, and um, a couple of notes about it. One is that it's kind of, a lot of the lessons are pitched as, uh, as if you were totally new to programming. So we're going to kind of pick and choose some of these, those that approach concepts from an absolute beginner perspective, for example, uh, loops or conditionals, which you already understand how they work, uh, we'll be skipping some of those more elementary lessons, and we're really going to pick off the really good ones, the ones that kind of focus on new concepts to you, such as um, how to use objects properly, how to use 
uh, dependency injection, how to use things that are unique to C-sharp that you have not encountered before. So we'll be covering some of these lessons, but definitely not all. Now, if you would like to go through the lessons that we don't cover, please feel free. There are lots of great lessons here and lots of great content. And if you find them valuable, please do take advantage of them. Another note is that if you find some of them going a little bit slowly, some of them go more quickly than others, some of them go more slowly, one quick tip is you can go through uh, the video here and you can go through it at 1.5 or even twice the speed. So uh, if you feel like it's moving a little bit more slowly for your pace, then you can adjust the speed and um, kind of get your own learning experience that way. Of course, if you want to slow down the speed, you can also go to half speed as well whatever your preference. The point is, these are great lessons and they're a good resource for learning C-sharp and object-oriented programming in C-sharp. Um, finally, in, uh, there we go. Finally, the last kind of resource we're gonna use is a lot of lesson videos. So uh, we'll be creating lesson videos for you to walk through to learn about ASP.NET concepts and try to distill all the information, the wealth of information that's out there online into meaningful lessons. There's a lot of content out there on the web. If you just went to the Microsoft website or to uh, Google and searched for ASP.NET MVC lessons or tutorials, you would find a wide variety of things covering a wide variety of topics. We're going to take the ones that we think are most important for you to learn at this point, and we're gonna distill those into some compact lesson videos for you to go through. Practice, of course, is a big part of learning these concepts and learning how to code. You've learned that already. And we're going to use basically the same framework that we've learned to date. We're going to use prep work throughout all of our classes and in-class in studios and assignments. So let's look at those a little bit from the course website. You can go to the classes section of the SkillTrack website to see just a grid here that lays out all of the material for the classes. Now, um, there's prep work for each class. So we encourage you to do all of this. You should do all of this prep work before you come into a given class. Uh, class recall is not a chance to learn these concepts for the first time, but to kind of review and ask questions and practice on the prep work concepts that you've learned before coming into class. So it's really important that you do all of the prep work. A lot of the prep work sections will have uh, exercises for you to practice with. So down here, we have just some exercises for you to work on. And these are not things that you need to turn in, but they're going to be things that will help you get hands-on practice with some basic concepts um, before you come into class and help you understand what you're stuck on, what you understand and what you don't understand. So you can make the most out of that in-class time. So do all the prep work before you come into class. Another component obviously is the studios. So we're gonna have studios the same way we did in units one and two, and most classes will involve a studio and that'll involve you getting hands-on practice with these concepts um, on your own or with a partner as, uh, as you're doing some pair programming. And then finally, as you know, the biggest components of the work for hands-on coding in this class are assignments. Uh, the assignments are listed over, not only on the assignments page in the menu, but they're also listed in this grid. And we give you in this grid the class at which you should um, you know, be able to begin the assignment. So here, the first assignment, Tech Jobs Console Edition, is going to be, you're gonna be able to start that assignment once you've finished learning the concepts for class two. We don't include the due dates on the assignments here just as a note, because sometimes those can differ slightly from class to class. Be sure to check learn.launchcode.org for the specific due dates for each of your assignments. These assignments within this, um, within this skill track are uh, what you might call progressive. They sort of add on to each other. There's four of them and they're all kind of uh, serial in the sense that they are have you working on different phases of the same application. So this application is called Tech Jobs, and it's um, kind of mimics what we actually use here at Launch Code in some ways to sort of store data and search and categorize data about jobs in programming that we help connect people to. So you're going to help work on a uh, a type of of uh, an application very similar to what we actually use here at Launch Code in some ways. And you're gonna do that through these uh, assignments. And these assignments are set up in terms of the way they're framed to really mimic real world scenarios. So the way the work is laid out, the language, the way it's presented, all of those things are um, gonna, gonna kind of more mimic a real world scenario and hopefully give you a feeling of, um, you know, something close to what you would do in your uh, launch code apprenticeship. All right, so those are the major components of learning and it's important to, to, to treat all of those um, equally, you know, the prep work is required to really learn the first phase of the concepts. The studios and in-class material is really is really required to um, 
you know, solidify understanding. And then the way you demonstrate your understanding is through that hands-on, in-depth exercise of concepts through the assignments. Some other notes about how you'll learn in this skill track that are maybe a little bit different from unit one and unit two. One is that obviously we're using professional grade tools. That's really important to us here at Launch Code. You've learned how to use Git. Uh, you'll be learning how to use Visual Studio and Visual Studio will actually integrate Git and a lot of other things. And we really wanna make sure that when you go to, um, to apply for an apprenticeship, you're ready and, and feel confident using the same types of tools that you'll be using uh, in an apprenticeship. We've also created problems that mimic real world situations. So I, I described the assignments and the way those track um, the development of a, an application, very similar to the one we use at Launch Code. Uh, so that's really important to us that you get experience programming in applications and building solutions that are very close to what you would do on the job. And finally, uh, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time learning with us here at Launch Code. And over the course of time, you've gone all the way from just starting to learn how to code and looking at very, very small pieces of concepts and very small programs to, to really building big applications. And part of that learning path is becoming um, independent uh, as, as a learner and as a programmer. If you're placed in a, in a situation where you're on the job working as a professional programmer, you're not going to have us to guide you. And so we really want you to be able to learn on your own, to be able to find solutions, to be confident in your ability to, to solve problems using only what you know and the internet and some peer help. So we're not going to totally cut you off, but we do want to kind of foster increased independence in how you work on programming problems. And for us, that means uh, a lot of things. In particular, it means that we're sometimes not going to point you directly at an answer. We're going to sort of give you a hint or a clue and uh, let you sort of figure out that answer on your own. It also means we're going to start relying on uh, some resources that are really what professional programmers would use. So as you learn C-sharp and .NET, we'll be relying very heavily on the official Microsoft documentation as opposed to any sort of you know, watered down collected lessons that are more of a textbook style. We want you to be using the tools that you would use on the job uh, and things like Stack Overflow and, and, and online boards as well. So we really want to make sure that you're learning and solving problems in the same way you will on the job. And finally, I want to say that throughout this skill track, we want to hear your feedback. So there's a, a few easy ways to do that. Um, from the skill track page, there's a, a, a reporting issues link here. If you go there, describe some of the basic ways you can give us feedback. If you find urgent issues, if you find uh, broken links, if you find a uh, problem with your starter code, be sure to notify us immediately so you can tag the appropriate launch code staff member on Slack and they will get to any issue right away. Any other sort of ideas, um, you know, ideas you have about ways we can make this better, um, things that, you know, typos, things that are small or non-urgent issues, you can file those on GitHub. So we've linked to the GitHub issues page for this course site. And you can just come here and create issues and file them away, and we'll be able to work on those and fix those in the appropriate time. So please do give us feedback, whether it's just an idea, um, good or bad, uh, about your experience, any sort of feedback you have about how we can make this class better for future Launch Code students is appreciated. So with that, good luck learning C-sharp and .NET.